David here. This week coming to you from Detroit as our friends at Sona Motors have invited us to be among the first American journalists to experience the Scion, a solar powered car being developed for the masses. Now, this is a very cool car featuring some outside the box thinking and technology behind its design, and I think you're going to find this really interesting. So here are the bullet points. The Scion's exterior is covered, literally just covered, in 456 seamlessly integrated solar half cells with the goal of seeping up as much energy from the sun as possible. We're talking the roof, the hood, the doors, everywhere. Sono says these cells can extend the Scion's estimated 190 mile battery range by an average of 70 miles per week in typical weather conditions and by as much as 150 miles per week in optimal conditions. The company's founder says the goal is to cover the daily average distance driven by a commuter, which he says is about 10 miles per day in European cities and roughly 15 miles per day in big US cities. One huge expected benefit of the Scion over many other EVs on the market is that it's bi-directional charging capable at up to 11 kilowatts. Essentially, what this means is that a Scion driver can turn the car into their own personal solar power plant that can charge devices, other EVs, or even put energy back into private or public energy grids. And Sono is releasing the Scion with an expected retail price tag of approximately $25,000. Not bad. Production on the Scion is expected to start in the second half of 2023, and the company hopes it will have just over a quarter million Scions produced within seven years. Now, the Scion isn't the only solar product this German company has to hang its hat on. During the event, Sono was also talking about its new Solar Bus Kit, which is a solar retrofit solution optimized for 40-foot public buses, which are commonly used in Europe. Sono says with this retrofit, you can expect to save up to 400 gallons of diesel per bus per year. So after I had the opportunity to check out the car and talk with some of the company's engineers, I spotted the company's CEO and founder, Lauren Hahn, and he agreed to an interview to answer some of my burning questions, like how the overcast skies in Detroit that day would affect the car's solar abilities. So, uh, Lauren, you know we're here in Detroit. Right. Um, you know, how would weather like this affect the solar panels? So we look, we're looking at the average an average of right, roughly 5,000 miles here in Detroit. Sure. And that's what we're looking at. It's There will be days where we'll have peaks and there will be days where we have lows, but what is most important is the average. Okay. And that's pretty good. Think about it. A car. Imagine I would sell you a combustion engine vehicle with the claim of putting you 5,000 miles for free in the tank. Yeah. That would be a good selling combustion engine vehicle. Here it's a solar electric vehicle, and the sun is not sending any invoices for the 5,000 miles. <laughs> nice, nice. And who do you imagine is your kind of ideal customer for this particular vehicle here? Um, we think commuters, mm -hmm. um, taxi drivers, perhaps, mm -hmm. and families. Okay. We think it's the perfect family car to bring your, you know, kids to school, back home, yeah. to drive to work, grocery shopping. This is the perfect car for them. How about maintenance requirements for the uh, Scion? Now, is there anything different from a uh, standard EV that you would purchase? Right. Um, no, we really tried to engineer it in a way that's easily to repair. Hmm. Um, we have a big service partner, which is not yet announced, will be announced in the future. Okay. Um, and we want to make sure that you will be able, also in 10 years down the road, to repair that vehicle. Sure, sure. Speaking of partners, is there anyone who you can mention who, who might have gone into the actual yes. um, you know, production of the vehicle? Yeah, sure. So we produced a vehicle at Valmet Automotive in Finland. Mm -hmm. uh, we have an LFP battery, 54 kilowatt hours from BYD Fintrims. Oh, cool. We use a Continental Vitasco 120 20, uh, kilowatt uh, motor. And uh, what are other partners have we announced? That, that's on the car side. On the solar side, we have over two, 22 customers mm. which are right now already today using our solar technology, ranging from Mitsubishi to Scania to MAN mm. or MAN. 
Um, so big corporations, big companies, where we see you know good potential for the future. Sure, sure. And I understand. So that this is coming in a hatchback model. Yes. Are there any plans for other models down the line? Yes, there are. First, we start with this hatchbacks family van. Then later, we have in plan a crossover, a bigger vehicle, higher volumes, perfectly fitted for the U.S. market. And then third, we have a last mile delivery van in mm. planning, uh, where we think solar totally makes sense. Sure, sure. Is there any sort of uh, shelf life on these uh, solar cells in the vehicle? You mean how long they last? Yeah. Well, we'd engineered them to overlast the vehicle. Oh, okay. That's what it Very does. cool. Yeah. Very cool. Um, so I understand that the uh, the engineering behind them, there, there right. are patents involved, it's proprietary right. to you. Right. How long did that take you to get that just right? Well, it took us uh, over five years to engineer the solar technology. We have tested over 3,000 material stacks. Wow. We have over 30 patents uh, granted or filed. Mm -hmm. So we have a very strong IP and a very strong engineering team just focusing on this whole value chain of solar. From the cell, to the power electronics, to the body integration, to even the software. Wow, okay. What happens if uh, one of the panels does get damaged? How do, you, how do you do that as a consumer? How do you fix that? Right, if it's a smaller dent, nothing. Uh, you might lose, lose a little efficiency on that particular cell, but not the whole module. Okay. Um, you, if you have a ha you know, really high impact a crash, mm -hmm. you would have to replace it just like any other car. Sure. Bidirectional charging, uh, yes. will that be available immediately and how does that work with this vehicle? So we, we designed the vehicle to be ready for bidirectional charging, 11 kilowatt AC, which is new, which in our opinion no one else has this. Why? Because mm -hmm. Everyone else has DC bidirectional charging. What's the difference? Well, with DC, you need an inverter in your garage in order to mm -hmm. be bidirectional charging capable, which is roughly another three to five thousand dollars. Very expensive. Very expensive. In our case, we put that into the car, so you will be able to to use a wall box, a regular wall box, uh, with some software updates on it, and then you can just. Um, use this wall box to do bidirectional charging 11 kilowatts AC. Wow, wow. Think about power shortages. Think about what we have in the US right now when, you know, a, a storm, a thunderstorm, or a hurricane comes over. This is the perfect vehicle here. It's 54 kilowatt hours on, <laughs> on wheels. It's a home storage on wheels. You get for $25,000 not only a solar car, you get a home storage. Sure, sure. So initially, this car will only be available in Europe. But this US tour where Sono brought the Scion to six high profile cities like New York, Boston, and LA shows some promise that Sono at least has an eye on some interest in the North American market. Just another note on those solar panels covering the car, too. Sono Motors has about 30 patents filed or granted sunk into those puppies, and so part of what makes them so unique is the fact that the company figured out a way to integrate these solar wafers into polymer rather than glass, which you might more traditionally see. That's what gives Sono the flexibility to integrate these solar panels almost anywhere they want all over the car. And if you want to know more of the in-depth R&D behind these solar panels, you can find a video where I speak with Sono Motors COO Thomas Hausch in the video description below. Oh, and before I go, I have to mention my favorite part, which you already heard Lauren briefly talk about before, but I just think it's so cool. The moss. I mean, I don't know, I just, I just like it. It gives it this kind of otherworldly look with the lights and the texture, and it's good for your in-cab environment too. I mean, come on, we need more forest floor in our cars. Going back to that moss, just because I think it's so cool. Right. Uh, it does look beautiful within the car. Um, is that sourced from a specific place? Does it need to be a you know certain kind of moss, or you know you just go and grab it out no, of the woods? No, no, it's a special uh, treated moss. It, you don't need to take any care of it. You don't need to water it. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Um, we integrate it in that way. You can even exchange it. So mm. we believe this will be a unique feature about the car because you can basically put into that area anything you like. 
Oh, okay. Maybe. Okay. And people will also replace it with, I don't know, with their favorite Matchbox cars. Or yeah, yeah. Or family pictures. I don't know. That's cool. But, but we think it's a great, you know, thing because people like to uh, individualize their vehicle. I'd love to know what you think about the rest of the car. Would the Scion work in the US? What do you like about solar EV integration and what don't you like? I'd love to hear your thoughts. All right, guys, my name is David Sickles, and this is the EV Impact Show. We'll see you next time.